there, Tiffany here with Years of Years, and it's this day in Disney for January 12th already. And we are going way, way back today, um, all the way back to 1628. On this day, Charles Perrault was born in Paris, France, all the way back in 1628. You may be wondering, well, what does this have to do with Disney. Well, he was an author and storyteller and a leading intellectual of his time. And really, he laid the foundation for the liter literary genre uh, fairy tale. So <laughs> that's really what all these wonderful films are for us that, um, you know, uh, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, all these films are fairy tales and they're based off of stories that people told and he took the time to write these stories down and a lot of the work that he did um, are still read to children these days. So um, he collected famous tales including Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, Puss in Boots, and The Little Red Riding Hood. So his versions were, like I said, mostly uh, adopted from earlier folk tales that never had been written or even published at all. Um, so before he, he actually, something he did later in his life, he came from a very um, wealthy family. He was well educated and did much work with um, the king at the time and um, had some involvement in things that you know you've heard of throughout your life like the Louvre for instance he helped up he was one of three designers who helped design the Louvre he was also a member of the Académie Française which was the French Academy but this was something that was um, very special and hard to get into and so he was um, you know a valued member of that and he advised Louis XIV. Um, and when he was advising him, one of the things he influenced him to do was have um, basically Aesop's fables, uh, fountains, uh, 39 to be specific, in the gardens at Versailles. So um, already he's showing his interest in tales and um, folk tales and such with Aesop's fables. And there's you know, in Versailles, all those amazing fountains to Aesop's fables. So, um, it's actually in the, the labyrinth of Versailles. I haven't been to Versailles or France, <laughs> so I haven't seen these things. I don't know for sure if they're still there, in fact, but I do think it's very interesting and worth um, being able to see. So, um, he lost his position as secretary, uh, in to I believe to the king at the time um, you know there's just like family that they wanted to there, there's always a lot in his history a lot of people are you know wanting positions and vying for positions and so there's a lot that he dealt with with that but um, so he just was kind of done with all that and decided to vote, devote the rest of his life to his children. He was in his 50s at this time. And so because he did that, he decided to publish um, Tales and Stories of the Past with Morals, but more commonly known as Tales of Mother Goose. That's right, he coined the phrase of Mother Goose as well. And so that's where that all comes from. And, um, you know, like I said, these stories were read to children today. Um, Sleeping Beauty, in particular, the film, um, the, the animated Disney film, based is based off of Briar Rose. Um, and it, it's pretty accurate to Peralt's uh, writings. And so some of the other um, fairy tales, you know, they use Grimm's and um, other past writers, but... You know, with Disney, they did they did follow Peralt's writing. Um, <clears throat> so with Little Red Riding Hood, I thought this was interesting. I thought you guys would like this. Um, Peralt actually wanted it to be a warning to readers, particularly um, young girls, and about men preying on them in the forest um, when they were walking or getting from one place to the 
another and so he concludes his fairy tale with a moral cautioning women and young girls about the dangers of trusting men he states watch out if you haven't learned that tame wolves are the most dangerous of all Perrault warns the readers about the manipulation and false appearances um, some men portray. I say wolf, for all wolves are not the same sort. There is one kind that has amiable disposition, neither noisy nor hateful nor angry, but tame, obli um, obliging and gentle, following the young maids in the streets, even into their homes. Alas! Who does not know that these gentle wolves are of all such creatures the most dangerous? Indeed, in Perval's version, the girl gets, um, you know, into bed and the wolf is there and devours her. Um, of course, lacking the happy ending. And you see that in Into the Woods, I think. They, they kind of show that version. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, it was a warning tale. And that's pretty true to fairy tales back then. I mean, they were used to entertain, to, um, you know, these stories and tales that were told orally. And I kind of talked about oral tales yesterday when we were talking about Michael Graves, but I am fascinated with the oral tale because they did it for different reasons um, in the past, just like we have entertainment today. But, you know, we're entertained um, you know, there's some shows we wouldn't watch with children, and so there were some stories that you wouldn't tell children, and, you know, people told when they were alone together as adults. And then, of course, there's stories that were told to children to warn them, um, and to help them understand the complications and scary things of life that could happen if they're not careful, and those tales were to teach them, you know, don't go into the woods alone, or <laughs> never cry wolf, because <laughs> if you keep telling a fib all the time, people not, might not believe you anymore, you know, tales like that. So I find it fascinating, and I'm, you know, was grateful to learn of Charles Peralta, knowing that he got these stor stories written down, and haven't we just progressed from written oral story, written story, to these amazing films that we watch and we can't even imagine <laughs> how they're doing the technology for it. So we've come so far in the storytelling, but we're still telling stories and that's what I love the most. So that's it for this day in Disney. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you next time.